in Richard Barsom and Dave Monahan's text, Looking at Movies and Introduction to Film. The term editing within the world of film is defined as the selection and arrangement of shots and sounds, what you see, how long you see it, and the order in which you see it. Often called the invisible art, good film editing will happen so fluidly that the viewer will not be aware of any cuts or edits at all. That being said, editing is one of, if not the most important steps in the creative process and has five primary functions. To organize fragmented actions and events, create meaning through juxtaposition, create spatial relationships between shots, create temporal relationships between shots, and establish and control shot duration, pace, and rhythm. Directors like Stanley Kubrick value the art of editing wholeheartedly and use editing not only as a means to tie elements of the story together in a cohesive way, but also to generate emotion and philosophical thought within the viewer. Today, I will be analyzing Kubrick's masterpiece, 2001 A Space Odyssey, and how he used jump cuts and montage editing to raise questions about the film's contents and questions of humanity. 2001 A Space Odyssey is a film so far ahead of its time, but at the same time, it's timeless. The film opens with the iconic Dawn of Man sequence in which these creatures are encountered by a mysterious black monolith that kickstarts humanity with the discovery of tools. And this monolith shows up at two other points in the film establishing a turning point in human destiny, on the moon and during the Jupiter mission. How could Kubrick span the millions of years between the eight men and space travel? Well, he quite literally jumps through time with one of the most famous jump cuts in film history. Thanks to the monolith, this ape has just discovered weaponry and throws it into the air. We immediately jump millions of years into the future to when humans have already developed space travel. Similarly, after the interaction with the monolith on the moon, Kubrick jumps 18 months forward to the Jupiter mission. Finally, the third interaction with the monolith jumps almost immediately into the near future when human beings can survive as a universal species unhindered by the confines of Earth. At least that's my interpretation. Each jump cut spans a shorter and shorter length of time to signify the exponential ability of humans to make the next evolutionary leap. What do I mean by this? It took tens of millions of years for single cell organisms to evolve into apes before the first monolith was found, the advancement being tools. Later, it only took six million years to reach the monolith on the moon, the advancement being space travel. Lastly, it took a mere 18 months to travel to Jupiter, the advancement being artificial intelligence capable of life beyond humanity. In terms of editing, this matter deals with the pacing of the story. We spend 20 minutes of runtime with the apes but even more runtime on the moon, and the majority of the runtime with Dave on the Jupiter mission. The more time humanity takes to evolve, the less runtime we have to interpret it. And the less time humanity takes to evolve, we are able to slow down with more runtime to view the evolution of man into the beyond. This isn't the only time that Kubrick has specifically conveyed periods of time to evoke a response. In the beginning of The Shining, title cards indicate very general events, the interview and closing day. But as the film progresses, we are told the days of the week and even the time as tension escalates. Kubrick masters pacing and manipulates how much we see at any given time before moving on to the next advancement. In 2001, Kubrick's use of the single jump cut has spawned several theories and questions of humanity's evolution through time. And though such a jarring and seemingly spontaneous jump breaks the notion of invisible editing, it grabs the audience's attention and begins to raise questions through the rest of the film as Kubrick intended. Another concept that Kubrick employs in 2001 is montage editing. Montage editing dates back to the early Russian film theorists who placed meaning through juxtaposition at the center of their approach to filmmaking. Lev Kuleshov conducted his own experiment by juxtaposing an actor with a neutral expression with various images and tested how audience interpreted the sequence. The Kuleshov effect, as it would be called, affects nearly every cut in every film as the viewer interprets every cut subconsciously. The majority of 2001 is devoid of dialogue, but this one sequence in particular masters the use of sound and montage editing to communicate the tense beginning of the HAL 9000 computer's seizing of control. Long take, no Beethoven, heavy breathing cuts to silence, quick cuts to hell, back to Dave on the ship, crisis. Without dialogue, we get everything we need to know through sound and the juxtaposition of shots. With these elements put together, we are visually presented with an emotional conflict that both drives the narrative forward and offers questions of human advancement. In his masterpiece 2001 A Space Odyssey, Stanley Kubrick used jump cuts and montage editing to raise questions about the film's contents and questions of humanity. Kubrick is known as one of the best visual directors because of his specific and perfectionist attention to what we see, how long we see it, and the order in which we see it. Although he adhered to the notions of invisible editing through sequences of dialogue, it's the moments in which he breaks the rules and seizes the audience's attention with sight and sound that Kubrick conveys his wholehearted love for the art.
of editing.